Uh, welcome back everybody. In this video we'll be making our own blockchain in JavaScript, uh, which you'll be able to run on your local network by the end of the tutorial. We'll start by actually coding the blockchain in vanilla JavaScript, and then we'll use the Express framework uh, to create an API endpoint so that we can interact with our blockchain through HTTP, like make post requests uh, to, to make new blocks and, and stuff like that. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. In this first part, I'll be giving you a small theoretical foundation of a blockchain, which we can then use to code. In short, a blockchain is an incredibly secure, sequential and immutable ledger of records called blocks that run on a distributed network of nodes without those nodes needing a third party to rely on for the integrity and state of that ledger. I mean, yeah. Put even better by MIT professor Christian Catalini, at a high level, blockchain technology allows a network of computers to agree at regular intervals on the true state of a distributed ledger. Um, such ledgers can contain different types of shared data, such as transaction records, attributes of transactions, credentials, or other pieces of information. The ledger is often secured through a clever mix of cryptography, game theory, and uh, does not require trusted nodes like traditional networks. This is what allows Bitcoin to transfer value across the globe without resorting to traditional intermediaries such as banks. So, this is how we're gonna go about building our blockchain. First, we'll break it down into smaller components and we'll code those components separately and eventually we'll put them all together. So, on to building the blockchain. Uh, the first step is to go with a single block. This is what a block should look like. We have the block index, which is an integer, the data, which can be transactions or just some, uh, just some information, a timestamp of when the block was created, and finally, the block hash. A hash is a string of hexadecimals that is the result of using a crypto cryptographic hash function, um, in this case, SHA-256, on a string. The string in this instance being the value of the entire body. This means that once the hash is calculated, because it's unique, changing anything in a body would result in a different hash, which would make the block invalid. It helps to think of a hash as a sort of a fingerprint for the contents of that block. Now let's go. Before we begin, I should mention that I will be using ES6 JavaScript syntax, uh, mainly arrow functions, destructuring, and template strings. I'll put links to additional reading in the description. Um, let's start by making a new repository. I'll call it blockchain.js. No, just blockchain.js. Um, Alright, this is where we'll be building our blockchain. Uh, since we'll be needing external node packages, we have to initialize our repository with npm init. Uh, you can skip this if you want to, but I'll just fill it in. Blockchain in JavaScript. Uh, this isn't that important. Um, all right, I'll throw polycode. And that's it. Okay, yeah, that's good. Um, okay, once this is done, let's create a new file called block.js. This is evidently where we'll be making the block. Now you can open your favorite text editor and we'll start by coding it. All right, so we know what a block should look like, but how do we translate that to JavaScript code? Well, for that, we're going to use a class with a constructor. So make a new class called block. And the constructor yeah, the constructor outlines what we should pass in as data when we create a new block, which in this case are the index, the data, the timestamp, which will by default be the time the block was created, and then the hash. So constructor um, data index timestamp, and we'll just make that the default time. So a string of the date the block was created. All right. Now, well, now we'll outline the, the properties, the fields of our block, which are the data, of course, and that will be the data that was passed in, the index, the index that was passed in, the timestamp, which is the timestamp that was passed in, and then eventually um, the hash. But calculate the hash, oh, that's something. We'll make a separate function. So this of hash equals this uh, uh, calculate hash. All right. 
let's uh, let's write the function. So actually, it's a method since we're working in a class. So calculate hash will look like this. We will return SHA256, which is uh, the hash function of the streamified version of our data. Since the data will always be passed in as a JSON uh, kind of type, then of the index of the timestamp. And uh, yeah, that's it. And that will stringify that as well. But we don't have the, the SHA256 function is not built in in JavaScript. For, so for that, we're going to need uh, a different module. So this will be npm install crypto.js. This will give us all the cryptographic hash functions we'll need. All right, now that that is uh, downloaded, we can import that shell 256 function using the search tree. 256 equals require crypto.js. All right, so that was the first part. We've now coded our entire block. Okay, so um, now that we've, we've coded the block, the next step is to chain these separate blocks together. So we start with index zero and we increment one for each new block. All right, let's code that too. Um, first up, we'll create a new file called blockchain.js. And because we'll be needing the block, we'll have to export it. So you do it like this, you basically export the whole class. Module.export equals block. And this allows us to require it in our blockchain file. So equals require. All right, um, so first we'll create a class called blockchain with a constructor that basically initializes an empty list and this will be the chain. So this dot chain equals an empty list. Now we'll have to create the first um, block of the chain. So the first block of a chain is always called the genesis block. So we'll create a new method called create genesis block. This doesn't take in any data, but it just returns uh, a new block. So let's see. Yeah, so you can define a genesis date if you want to. Otherwise, it's just going to return the default value, but I'll just you know, put in the day I was born. So uh, 1999. And we'll return a new block with the data being Genesis block. The index being zero and the date being the Genesis date. Okay, so now we can populate the chain with the Genesis block. So call the function, the method actually. Oh. And that will give us our first block. Okay, and next method we need to define is the get last block, which, you know, does what you think it does. It returns the last block. So this is a chain of length minus one. We need, doesn't seem like an important uh, method, but we need this for our next method, which is basically the essence of a blockchain. So the add new block method takes in as a parameter a new block, calculates the index automatically using the get last block uh, function. Plus one, all right. And then it also calculates the hash automatically. So we have to call new block dot calculate hash to calculate the hash of its contents. And then eventually you push the new block that we've just created onto the chain. Okay, great. So basically 
this is the essence, the core of a blockchain. I mean, yeah, of a tiny blockchain. To show all this, to demonstrate all this, we'll just add some blocks. So let's say five. All right, and to use our uh, blockchain class, we have to define it as an instance. I'll call my instance polychain. Not very original, I know. And to finally populate that chain, we'll use a for loop. Now, I assume you guys already know how all of that works, so I'm not gonna dive into the mechanics. But if you don't, please stop the video and learn how these constructs work because they're important. So for each block, um, we add a new block. And the add new block function, remember, takes in a new block. And then we'll pass in the data as in a JSON format because this makes it like way easier to parse and pretty much a lot easier to read as well. Uh, we'll do it into in a sender and receiver format, so basically a transaction. I'll not give you guys any Bitcoin or something, but just some you know, random information. So the receiver will be you guys. And as a message, let's say, yeah, we're gonna use template strings so as a message. Template strings are achieved with backticks and they allow you to basically write JavaScript inside of your stream. So block. Now between the curly braces, everything is JavaScript. So poly chain dot chain dot length has been oh, come on. Sorry. has been added to the chain. So this basically keeps track in what place it is. And eventually we'll just print it out. We'll print out each block separately using a for each and an arrow function. So this is the ES6 um, syntax if you hadn't noticed. And we'll console the block it. Oh, every block. Okay, so this should work. Let's uh yeah, let's try it. Okay, so to to use a, a node file, you basically just do node and then the file you wanna run. So node chain dot chains. Oh, calculate hash. Oh, that's funny. Calculate hash. Okay, let's try that again. All right, nice. So as you can see, this is our basic blockchain. I mean, it's not a chain yet, but it's a bunch of blocks. So we have the block, the first block, which is the Genesis block with my birthday as a date. And then uh, it's a unique hash. As you can see, it's all pretty unique. And then the message, here, here you can see template strings in action. So block one, block two, and so forth. Okay, now that we have a very basic chain, um, it's, it's starting to look like a blockchain, but we still have some problems. So, because most blockchains are permissionless, which means that anybody can interact with it and append data to it, we have to assume that a skilled programmer can change the data in each, each block, including the index and the timestamp. So, how do we maintain order and integrity in our chain? Well, yeah, so here's the problem. Um, we use what's, yeah, the hashes I introduced earlier. So, remember that the hash counts as some sort of proof of what is in the block at the moment it is created. If we now put the hash of the previous block, in each block, so like this, and we chain them together, the chain becomes impossible to tamper with without anyone noticing. For example, if I were to change the data of block one, block one's hash would change, but because it's also included in, in the next block, that one's hash would change as well and so on. So this basically prevents any sneaky tampering with the blockchain and makes it practically immutable. So to illustrate all this, let's look at a small demo. All right, so let's say that this is the blockchain we currently have. Um, if I were to change the data, for example, in one of the blocks, let's say, you know, two, therefore changing the block's hash, as you can see, the following block's hash would change too because it incorporates a previous hash. This would corrupt the whole chain following the block that was tampered with. So that's a nice visual. All right, uh, credits to Anders Brownworth for this demo. I'll put a link to his blog in the description. 
okay so this is it for this video um if you liked it please yeah leave a like and um in the next video we'll be incorporating all of this into our code um, we'll also be adding proof of work and eventually we'll make a server out of our blockchain so that we can interact with it over http see you guys next time